All right, so first example for centripetal force, uniform circular motion, we have um, in a 1901 circus performance, Allo Daredevil Dia Diavolo introduced the stunt of riding a bicycle in a loop the loop. So assuming that the loop is a circle with a radius R of 2.7 meters, what is the least speed V that Diavolo and his bicycle could have at the top of the loop to remain in contact with it there? So first and foremost, we need to draw a free body diagram. Now this is kind of hard to see, especially if this is the first time you're doing a problem like this. Do you see that little guy right here at the top of that loop? Now look at the direction of the normal force for a second, okay? He's at the top of the loop, the bike is upside down. Remember, normal force is the force that really is keeping him going in this circle. It's the resting or supportive force of the inside of that loop. So normal force is directed downward here, which is super weird because when we draw a free body diagram, we have force of gravity down and we also have normal force down. And that is our free body diagram at the very top of that loop, loop, which I know looks super weird. But with circular motion like this, what's happening is that the velocity is tangential. So the velocity there is to the right or the left and that normal force and force of gravity they're causing an acceleration directed downward, which is then changing the direction of the velocity vector. So just because we have a force of gravity and a normal force down, that doesn't mean that object is actually moving down. It's just the direction of acceleration, the direction that we're changing the velocity in. So it's not the direction of velocity, it's direction of acceleration, okay? That's the tricky part about this problem. So we wanna know, what the least speed V is that he can go to remain in contact with it there. So problems like this, and we've kind of talked about this before when they're like, it's almost not in contact with the road anymore. So what it means by that is that the normal force is approaching zero. So because of this, we're just gonna plug in zero for the normal force, and then we can find our answer. So that's the least speed that that bicycle would have to go in order for it just to be almost coming off that ramp, okay? That up, and when we're upside down at the very top. Um, of course, we know that because of the centripetal, we know centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. The faster we go, the higher the centripetal force. So therefore, that normal force will be increasing, um, which is why we're finding the least speed. Now, this centripetal force here is going to be made up of both the force of gravity plus the normal force, because those two forces are the ones that are causing that acceleration downward like that. So remember, we talked about how centripetal force is a general force, which can mean because it could be multiple different forces. Here, it's made up of both the force of gravity and the normal force. And that's going to be equal to mv squared over r. Now, of course, here we did say that normal force is approaching zero, so we're just gonna plug in zero for normal force. We're solving for velocity. So here, this becomes zero. I know force of gravity is mass times acceleration of gravity. That's gonna equal mv squared over r. Here, look, I have mass in both terms, so I can cancel that out. Notice how they didn't give me mass in the problem. So that should have kind of almost gave you a clue as to, I think maybe mass is gonna be canceled out in a problem like this because they didn't give it to you. Um, and then now we can solve for velocity. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by radius. I get V equals the square root of G times R. So velocity is equal to the square root of 9.8 meters per second squared. R, the radius was 2.7 meters. So we get 9.8 times 2.7 take the square root of that answer, and we get 5.14 meters per second.